Hello everyone. In this video, I'll go over analog value reads in microcontrollers. In previous videos, I went over digital signals uh, pretty much every time. However, today I will go over things that read values from sensors that are not just zero or one, but are more like over a range of values. So if we go through examples of this kind of stuff, uh, it would be a soil moisture sensor, it could be soil very dry or soil very moist or somewhere in between. You could have a water level sensor that when you place in water, uh, the resistance of these uh, wires changes. So you can figure out based on how much current uh, goes through the sensor, whether the water level is high or low or no water at all. And joysticks are also such an option. So if you want to create your own game controller, for example, and you want to move the joysticks left or right, you would measure all left being zero and all right being one or something in between. So to get started, I connected my joystick. Uh, let me go full screen. I connected my joystick to a microcontroller. Basically, I give it power and ground, and I connected the two axes that say X and Y to A0 and A1, and I would like to read values uh, from there. So let's see how we can do that. Maybe the first thing is to read documentation. So let's do cargo doc open. And the first thing I would do, I would search for ADC. And there are a lot of things named ADC. Usually I would just go for hardware instruction layer. In this case, if I click through them, it, it turns out that this is the right one, but maybe the simplest way is I go in parameters and it tells me that there's a new, that has, says initialize a new ADC, which seems a great starting point. Um, now I'm, I'm reading through it. I don't care what the actual content of the ADC is. I just care that I can create one. And to create one, it seems I need to uh, give it this type, uh, which I expect to be one of the peripherals and on the device. And I need to allow it to change clocks because this matters when I configure any pin. Through it, I can uh, set various configurations. I can set precision. If I go into precision, uh, it will tell me how many bits of information I can ask for. Generally, the more bits you ask, the more precise the value, but also the slower it gets because I believe uh, ADC is based on comparators. So it will go something, it goes, is it, bigger than half the voltage or smaller. And once it finds that, it, it halves it again and halves again. So it needs several comparisons to get this kind of precision. So if you add high speed, but not so much precision, you say less bits. And uh, once I configure everything, apparently I can read absolute value in millivolts. So uh, let's use this interface. The first thing to do is my delay is, oh, my screen is refreshing really. All right. Uh, so I connected everything to GPIO A. So instead of C where I had the LED, I will convert it to A. And I want to have uh, two axes. So I have say A0 and A1. And I would like to convert these to old code says PC13. Let's say A0, PA0, PA1 and I return it as a tuple. And not LED is initialized, but something else. Perfect, uh, I will save this and hope that it compiles and uh, let's see what happens. It says that uh, values do not have to be mutable, but I know they, they will need to be mutable uh, later on. Let's initialize an ADC. I will auto import ADC from the hardware section layer. I will say new and from peripherals, from peripherals, I give it the ADC and I allow it to change clocks. And now I will set precision. I'll set it to high precision because why not? I don't need high speed. Well, let's say 12. At this point, I should be able to read uh, millivolts. So I'll uh, let uh, value zero would be ADC read absolute millivolts. And it will say, uh, I need to give it a pin, A0 and A1 as well. Now, if I look at the documentation, this will give me uh, an error because the pin is into push pull mode, is not into analog. So let's correct that. And 
And uh, with this value, I would like to print it. Printing both values. Uh, printing every 300 milliseconds is a bit painful, so let's do every one second and save it. It is not mutable. I need to give it a reference, I believe. And I, I want to display the values, not the pins. ADC is not mutable. Sure, that makes sense. Perfect. So I have values that can be read. Let's try it out. And it keeps on uh, printing values. I will increase the size of the camera a little bit. So now it's somewhat in the middle. As you can see, the ADC is not like the value will not be exactly uh, half of 32K. Now, if I move it around, you see one goes to the max, which is 3.3 uh, volts, roughly. And if I go to the min, I can change it to most values. These values, you can see that they uh, wiggle around. So it's not always 16 something, even though I don't touch the joystick. So if you ever wondered what the settings in games, in game controls are like, what's a dead zone? Well, this is a dead zone. I'm not touching the joystick at all. However, its value still wiggles just a little bit. So you need to set up some dead zone. And uh, even worse, actually, when uh, people hold the uh, game control in their hand and rest their fingers on it, it will also change. So. Um, you need to set up dead zones. And the other bit is I think here I could, I could never reach. It's not always clear what the minimum and maximum values are. Amazingly enough, it actually says zero and it says around 3.3. In most cases, the range of the joysticks, for example, may not be min to max. So pretty much all of these sensors require some calibration. Either the device is very high quality and then it's within very tight tolerances and it works very well. But in most cases, you would have to measure a minimum and a maximum yourself and then encode that in maybe some configuration file, maybe in your program. So you have uh, something to work with that is not just randomly different from device to device. Uh, this is great. So I have a delay. I have a delay here of every one second and I will print out the values. What I would like to do maybe because that's a bit more interesting is I would like the value to be displayed only when it changes. Because the values move around, I don't really want to display it on every single change because that, that would be a very fast updating thing. So I'd like to build some sort of a tolerance to say, hey, if, if this change is more than 50 millivolts, display a new value. So uh, let's go through, through how to do that. So the first thing would be, uh, let's, let's make a structure ADC reading, let's say. and figure out what to put inside. Uh, so the first thing I would like to put, I would like to put the pin uh, that I'm using. And I, I will say this is a generic type because uh, it is not entirely clear what types there are. Uh, so if I go in here into reading, you can see that the pin is generally a channel. So I will name it channel and, and deal with it later. Then uh, the other thing is I would like uh, on every update to display a name. So I'll say name, it's a reference to a string. Now, because I put the reference to a string, this, op this structure has to live as long as a string lives. So I have to unfortunately start putting uh, lifetime annotations. So I'll say this ADC reading can exist as long as the strings exist as well. Uh, I will have a known, known value, which is the millivolts that I'm reading. And uh, when I create the object, I will not know the current value. So I'll just say it's, just, it's done. And uh, sensitivity in millivolts, it's a U16. And I will say uh, after this change, so track of how, how big of an update until uh, we display something on the screen. Uh, let's, let's implement this. And I will copy and paste a bit out of this. Uh, it's faster than me typing it. It will look something like this. So let's say I'm implementing the, the ADC reading. 
This time, however, I have to specify that the channel has to be a channel of ADC and ID U8. And the way I got this is I basically looked at the interface of read absolute millivolts and I figured out what the interface should be. Uh, and I create a new one. When I create a new one, I will need the name and the sensitivity and I will place the pin, I place the name, I say I don't know the current value and the sensitivity is whatever what does then. Uh, then what I want to do is I would like to uh, call an update and I will, I will access self and I will change it because I change uh, the known value and I will use the ADC which will be mutable ADC channel. Let's figure out how to do it. It should look something like uh, this. So the idea would be that uh, I, I read the current value and then I have to figure out is this current value, did it change enough for me to care? Uh, ideally, I would use an absolute value saying if the known value minus current value, absolute value is different, uh, is, is bigger than a specific value, then I find I, I mark that I need to update. Unfortunately, the ties are U16. And if I do U16, let's say if I do uh, 5 minus 10, both U16, uh, Rust instead of wrapping over, it will actually tell me, it will throw an exception, I believe. So I don't want to deal with that. Um, so I, I made sure that I only do the difference between values when I know that one is bigger than the other. Uh, so I have three cases, actually. I have none in which I don't know the current value. This will be the first call. And I say, sure, I should update. Then if I know that uh, the known value is bigger than the current value, I get that difference and see if that reaches sensitivity. Otherwise, I basically revert the difference. So I never get an overflow. And if I should update, what I will do, I will say I am updating the known value and I am printing the name and what the current value is. Now let's use this class. I'll say let uh, reading zero. So new ADC reading uh, for uh, A0. And uh, I will name it A0. And precision, I think 10 maybe is enough. I don't know. Um, if I see too many values printed out, I will change it. So A0 and A1. And then without a delay, I will go into a loop. And I will say R0 update using the ADC. And R1 update using the ADC. And let's see, let's save it and see if it compiles. I have to fix imports. This import actually will not work, uh, funnily enough. Uh, so if I look at the channel uh, in the documentation, it is part of embedded hell, and I did not add embedded hell to my toml right now. So let's uh, do that. I go in here, embedded hell, and I don't care about the version. So I just save it. Let's see if now I can import channel. Uh, yes, it does know that uh, channel is from embedded hell ADC. Save it again. I don't see any complaints. It says that delay is not used because I'm not uh, doing any delays anymore. And amazingly enough, the pins don't need to be mutable. I can update that too. And I need to make R0 mutable and R1 mutable. Great. Let's run. And it changes way too fast. If I, if I look at them, they kind of wiggle around maybe 20. So let's, let's do 50, maybe it's big enough. It seems stable. Now let me move around the joystick and you can see it tracks my changes. Perfect. So uh, at this point, I have something that works with the joystick. Let's see if I can use a water sensor. Uh, this is how a water sensor looks like. It has power plus, minus, and it has uh, the sensor. So I will plug everything out. I will give it power. And I will put A1 to be the actual value. And on A0, I will ground it because otherwise I think 
too many changes have been recorded, so I will do something that's crazy loop. Let's run. It says that everything is zero. So now I will take a glass of water and I will take my sensor and see what happens if I plug it in. So you can see it goes to 400. Now I take it out of the water and it goes low again. Not that much low because I have to wipe out the water and eventually I hope it will go to zero. Uh, but pretty much is you put it in water, it goes high, you take it out of the water and it goes lower. Um, I'm surprised it doesn't go back to zero, but oh well. It's not that accurate. Next, I will uh, put a capacitive soil sensor and I will play with that uh, after a brief stop. Okay, I hooked up the capacitive uh, soil sensor and I played around with it. I'll be honest, I actually don't know exactly what values I'm supposed to be seeing. Uh, if I run cargo run, it gives me A1 2.4 volts that that's fine and now I wet my finger and I push on it and I get different values so the only thing I say is see is that water does make a difference realistically if I would make a sensor out of it I would stick it in a pot of plants and uh, see how it behaves uh, the values of while I water the plant and while over the day as it dries up or I read at some manufacturer specification so all I can say is it does work it shows analog values that can be represented as moisture because water affected it. But other than that, it's, I, I don't know how to calibrate it. It definitely needs calibration. This was it. Uh, I hope you found this interesting or maybe you can use this information in your future projects. Have a great day. Thank you.